for truth please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started i've got a go curious ahead. one here because i've heard this one it, it does go back to flood geology here yeah. um, because I, i've heard a question or an argument and i'm curious if you've heard of this one and what your thoughts are it, it's in regards to the uh, appalachian mountains that you're talking about earlier and the yeah. question from the critics goes like this they say how do we get a stratigraphied folded mountain range that is between two divergent plates according to our model is is, is that is that um is that a okay. question you're familiar with or yeah and, uh, let me uh pull up my whiteboard here which is pieces of white paper and let me draw this off uh conceptually now traditional geology views the Appalachian Mountains, which actually are contiguous, or um, what would the right word be? They continue through America, up through Canada, and across over into Scotland and England. And so the orogeny that caused the Appalachian Mountains is supposed to be one of the oldest ones. And the Appalachians are supposed to be older than the Rocky Mountains. So let's draw um, here the one world continent, and we'll use this as the North Pole here. We'll draw the one world continent that we as flood geologists consider to be before the time of the flood. Many of you know the vocabulary of the Tethys Sea, Gondwana land, and so forth. I won't take the time to put this on here, but I will put some squigglies to indicate that this is water, this is ocean, and then the continent was there. Okay. The fountains of the gate, Great Deep break up, and we begin to get... Uh, continental separation and uh, the beginnings of plate tectonics. And so we'll view this as scene one. Now let's go to scene two. And instead of the whole world, let me focus on uh, Europe and um, North Africa. I'll put North Africa here, Europe here. And then here is uh, the sediments in North America, and once again, the North Arrow. So if we draw it like this, where we've got the North Arrow and Europe and North Africa, and then North America, during the first uh, six months of the flood, the units that are found in North America in the Appalachian Mountains are laid down. This, this begins with, in Tennessee, the Cambrian, uh, Rome Shale with trilobites in it, goes up through the carbonates of what's called the Knox group. Um, these are dolomites and limestones. And then proceeds on up through large sandstone bodies and uh, culminates with for my purposes, 
the uh, Pennsylvanian and Mississippian coal measures, which in other parts of the world are called the Carboniferous in Europe. Okay, so all these layers get laid down. Okay, this is scene two, and this scene is occurring maybe, I don't know, three months into the flood. So you got all this being deposited, and then what is now viewed as the, um, how could I illustrate this? The, the vocabulary that's being used is convergent versus divergent plate boundaries. So if we take the Plato once again and go down in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, we find the plate associated with Europe meeting the plate that's associated with North America. And this is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that runs up the Atlantic Ocean all the way. And you can actually see it in the country of Iceland. Several creations have led tours there lately. So you can literally put one foot on the blue and one foot on the red, and you're on two different tectonic plates. And it's true that right now they are divergent. The flood geology argument is that it has not always been that been that been the case that uh, Europe and North America uh, collided late in the flood along this line here, and here in North America you had the formation of the Appalachian Mountains. And then it goes all the way around to Scotland and uh, over into, uh, well, let's stop at Scotland for now. You can find uh, units there that are very similar to the units that you have in North America. And everybody, and including these, remember I told you a story earlier about working with these three geologists who themselves were in their 40s when I was in my 20s. One of them loved to tell the story of what one of his professors did, where you put together uh, North America and uh, South America and Africa and Europe. And he, he loved telling the story about his professor having him actually take a map of the world and cut along the uh, continental shelf. And it's obvious that the knee of South America, and again, this is north here, fits in to South America. The fit for North America is not as clear, but everybody has seen uh, how South America fits into that part of Africa. And it turns out the rock units are contiguous across that. So to summarize my argument, um, early in the flood, maybe the first six months, three months maybe, the units that are made up in the Appalachian Mountains were formed and they were in this rock mechanics argument we've been talking about, essentially the consistency of Plato. So they get folded into the Appalachian Mountains, but it's a regional thing. It's a worldwide thing. There are a hundred geologic facts that push me toward flood geology. One of them is the fact that these stratigraphic units like the Coconino we've talked about in the past, other units that are in South America and Africa, they can be traced worldwide and can be traced in the, the um, petroleum geology, the drill, drill cores that uh, Dr. Tim Clary has been working on and published a book about recently. Does that help in the explanation of that?
Absolutely. Absolutely. That was a phenomenal answer, incredibly detailed, and that was extremely helpful. Um, you mentioned, and I find flood geology so interesting and, and fascinating, especially listening to you um, talk about Thank it, you. Uh, Professor yeah. McQueen. You mentioned Europe and North America would have collided late in the flood. So in a sense, during the flood period, um, would there have been many supercontinents formed almost temporarily? Well, I think the, the clearest way to say it for staying for truth was this, that there was, uh, and let me get some Plato here to make it. There was one world continent before the flood. And this is an argument based on the book of Genesis. What happens between day one, day two and day three. Right. You you recall that the mountains rose up and there was a there was a flood in the book of Genesis chapter one. That's the flood of Adam's day, if you will, not the flood of Noah in chapter six, seven, and eight. So there was all all kinds apparently of tectonic activity that revolved around this C shaped uh, continent in the time of the flood. Uh, creation and then up to the time of the flood. And so these different units began to break apart during the flood. And we'll let this be Europe and this be America. And they collided perhaps several times. Uh, but the most important thing is that the Appalachian orogeny occurred there. Right. I've always thought, although I haven't thought through it lately, that the Rocky Mountains probably were formed and that Rocky Mountain orogeny was later on in the flood. But that's a topic for further research. 